You know how I always tell you guys you should subscribe because you never know what I'm going to be doing next? Part of the reason for that is because sometimes I never have a clue what I'm going to be doing the next day. Sometimes it comes to me on a whim and I just have to do it because that's what I do. I make things. And if you had asked me yesterday at this time what I'd be doing today, I would have said, well, I'd be shooting a video on a little hand carved Viking beard bead project because I've been growing this beard out for a ridiculously long time, specifically to make this project. And it's finally getting to that length where I think it's gonna be really cool. But then when I was leaving the shop last night, I was walking past the dumpsters and there was this item there and I couldn't resist it. Somebody else's garbage was something I'd been looking for for a while. And that's what today's project is about. All right, I know the suspense is killing you, but last night I found this monitor by the dumpster. I have no idea whether it works or not, and frankly, it doesn't matter to me. I've got a project in mind for it, and I'm gonna turn it into something cool. This is not starting well. These things are impossible to get into. Okay, well, I finally wrestled this thing off of here. What a pain that thing was. So you've got two kind of elements that make up a monitor. You've got the, the backlight portion, and then you've got your LCD panel, and that gets all the pixel information on it. And in between that, you've got this diffusion layer. This is the magic of this project. There are a couple of sheets of film on here. So this first one is a diffusion. It's got a, a matte side on the outside and a shiny side on the inside. The next one is this like refraction material. And it appears to be shiny on both sides, but that is really what I'm after. And then there's another layer of diffusion. Again, matte side out, shiny side in. This is an older monitor, so it actually has like a little compact fluorescent light fixture in there. And that's what we're replacing. The way these work is the light kind of illuminates into the side of the acrylic, kind of disperses up through the diffusion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna put a strip light of LEDs in where these compact fluorescents were. So I've ordered a couple things. This came off Amazon, it was like 15 bucks. I'm gonna put a link down below because this is awesome. This is five meters. It was very, very inexpensive. It's got a color rendering of 97% and it's flexible and already has the adhesive on. I literally am just gonna stick it in on both sides so those lights illuminate straight into the acrylic. I bought a USB barrel adapter because I've got this idea that I wanna be able to plug this in to a USB battery pack plug the USB, which is gonna be a five volt out into this cord. This little device was like $3 and basically it uh, boosts the voltage up. So I'll put the five volt on the inside, then I'll be able to adjust this little screw and I'll have 12 volts coming out. I'll run it to a couple of uh, red and black wires and then plug it into the lights. And I should be able to power this off of either a USB connector plugged into the wall battery operated or wall operated all for like 25 bucks, including the lights. So in order to do this, I have to cut it at a specific length. So I can cut it everywhere where these little cut marks are, these copper marks. And that's as simple as that is. Another one the same. And there you go, there's my two strips. So I just realized I've left my multimeter at home for another project. 
and I have no way of knowing without a continuity tester which wire connects to the center pin and which one connects to the outside pin. So I'm gonna to have to do a little test. I'm gonna wire one side of this, so now one of these is black. So all I have to do now is touch to either the outside or to the center pin and find out which one is which. Now I know for sure that's positive, so that's gonna be wired up as positive tip. So I'm just gonna mark it with a little piece of tape. I just have to do a little bit of soldering. Always exciting when I solder successfully and like barely cook the adhesive on the back, which is perfect. Those seem pretty good. So now I can just slide this heat shrink up over top of it and then I'll hit it with the heat gun. All right, so the first one's ready to go. It's interesting how doing things like this on camera can be a little bit stressful. Like, I mean, it's stressful in real life, but then adding the camera to it just means that there's that much more that could go wrong. I'm sure somebody watching is just cringing at my soldering. Thinking, well, you should probably never have the soldering iron like red hot like that. Is that how, it, how I should be soldering? I don't know, let me know in the comments below. Okay, wow, I'm just having a go of it tonight. You know, I had a 50-50 chance, but this is the input and I was supposed to solder these onto the output. So let me cut those off and fix that. All right, that was somewhat painful, but um, I'm there. So the idea with this is that I'm gonna be able to wire this on the back side. Stick a strip up here, and then this other strip is gonna go down at the bottom. Okay, so now in theory, I should be able to plug this in. I know I'm supposed to turn this to, to adjust it, but I have a feeling it's just gonna adjust the brightness anyways. There we go. All right, well, that doesn't seem to be adjusting the brightness, but that's essentially the two light strips installed. And then the idea is that this, all of these other pieces will fit back in there now. It should look like an outside window. So I'm reinstalling this panel with the original screws. So I've just stuck these down with some foil tape. Obviously the monitor used to get really hot. I'm not too worried about getting hot now because I've got two strips of LEDs in there, but I just wanted this to be secure. Okay, I got my multimeter. And even with a high output USB wall charger, I still can't get the voltage to go up to a 12 volt, which is the maximum brightness for these LEDs. So I'm just gonna rip the whole thing out and I'm gonna replace it with just a 12 volt power adapter plugging straight into the wall, still using that barrel connector. Now I could mount this in a wooden frame, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this original housing. I had totally forgotten how this thing went back together, but now I have remembered Okay, so now, now the panel's back on the face and I can put it back inside the shroud. In theory, plastic shroud should just pop right back on really easily. And look at that, it has. I've mounted this upside down, this bracket, and it's acting like a little foot. Now before I show you guys this one last time, I'm just gonna do a little prop thing here and I'm gonna remove this logo. Okay, that's not coming off quite as nicely as I want it to, but I will get, it is coming off. Still kind of sort of there, but it's mostly gone. I'm gonna keep working at it. I quickly just whipped up this little aluminum bracket as a foot so I can make the monitor stand up. Well, the foot worked out great. Let's plug this thing in and see if it works. And voila, there it is, fully complete a light exactly the way I wanted it to be. I'm actually really excited to have this project off my bench because I can now use this in my future videos to make my videos better. And it cost me almost nothing. Okay, I think it is finally beer time. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do. <laughs> Stolen. <laughs> Stole it. Okay, well this well this thing is finally done. What a pain in the Cheers everybody. Remember to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you next time where you never know what we're going to be building next. <laughs>